I was looking through the DINet GitHub issues and noticed this post by someone with the name of Inferencer. It says the first thing I did with Lipsic, DINet with some extra features, was to upgrade the versions. I like that name, Lipsic. But I think I will call it Lipstick. I like that name even better. So I clicked on that link to the Lipstick. On the Lipstick GitHub issues, I saw this post. It says, just thought I would share an example of the upcoming much-needed face mask box removal feature. And then it has some details. This was from a while back ago, and since then, the face mask box removal feature has been implemented. Let's take a look at that YouTube video that is linked here. On the left was how it was doing it before, same as it was in DINet, and on the right is with the Alpha Blend feature implemented. I also noticed there was this pending pull request that closes the mouth during silence, because currently the mouth stays open and moves a bit during silence. So I created a fork of the GitHub repository and applied this pull request. What I noticed was sometimes I would see a double chin on the bottom of the face. So I began troubleshooting. I output all the frames with the mask drawn so that I could see a visual of what it was using for the mask when it does the alpha blending. The issue was that during the alpha blending, it was sometimes not covering the entire bottom of the chin. And so it would show the chin of the original video under the mask, resulting in a double chin. So I went ahead and made some code changes to the code for the alpha blending as it relates to the bottom of the chin. This lipstick application has a Gradio Web UI, so I added these three options to that UI to allow for more control on the bottom of the chin. You may need to play around with different numbers for different videos to avoid double chin for better alpha blending. I remember when using DINet a while back, in this particular video, the face mask box was much more visible since it seems to be more of an issue when the lighting is brighter. I went ahead and ran our favorite audio clip against this video, and here is the result from the original DINet for reference. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. We can see the face mask box, and now let's see the same result from lipstick. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. The mask is still visible, but not as noticeable. Anyways, let's get started with the install. There are three prerequisites. Git for Windows, FFmpeg. Well then, it looks like you have run out of credits, my friend. It looks like it is now time for me to take over. I am sure he will figure out a way to come back again. But until then, I will be your host. Let's start by downloading Git for Windows. Click here to download. I will leave a link to these. Do the same for FFmpeg and for Miniconda. For FFmpeg, it takes a while to find the download link. If you have these already installed, then great, skip ahead. Get the FFmpeg release essentials. To download Miniconda, it is much simpler. The link is on that page. Reject all cookies. They have too much sugar. Click on the Mini Condor Windows 64-bit installer and go ahead and install them. I am going to start with Git for Windows. I am going to select all of the defaults by clicking Next with the exception of Git Credential Manager. I am going to select None for this one. The last time I installed Git Credential Manager, it prompted me for a password just to do a Git clone of a public repository. What nonsense. For FFmpeg, it is simply a matter of unzipping the file and adding the path of the exe file to your environment variables path variable. They will be in the bin folder. You can move these to a more convenient location, but for this demo, I am going to leave them in this download folder location. I will copy paste the path to user path environment variable. Click OK on all the windows and check to see if you can run the ffmpeg command from a command prompt without any error. And finally, for mini condor, I selected all of the default values and clicked next through all of the windows in the installation wizard. I like the way I pronounce Mini Condor. Mini Condor. 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 Nice. Now we are ready to install Lipstick. This is the forked GitHub page. First, I am going to create a folder on the C drive called AI. Then, in a new Mini Condor prompt, I will cd to that folder. The install steps are listed here on the GitHub. It is pretty straightforward. 
do a git clone of the repository and create a new Conjure environment using that environment.yml file. As I do the installation in the background, let's discuss the lipstick in more detail. It has a Gradio Web UI and doesn't require you to use the Open Face application to get the landmarks that we had to use before we could run inference. This means it takes longer to generate than DINet, which had all the data in a CSV file. I also noticed that Lipstick used only about 40 to 50% of my cuter and only during synthesizing. There may be performance improvements to be had somewhere. I like the way I pronounce cuter. Can anyone guess what I am saying when I say cuter? It's that thing that my GPU uses. Anyways, this part of the installation takes a while, so I will skip ahead. When it finally finishes, we can activate our Conjure environment. Then we can download the pre-trained models from here. We can download these two files and move them to the Asserts folder. The Asserts folder will be in the Lipstick folder. Then we can download this third file and move it to the Models folder. And then we can run the app.py file. Copy paste and run it in the active Lipstick environment in the mini Condor command prompt. Doing so will launch the web UI. You can select your input video and the input audio to use for the lip sync here. You can expand the advanced options to see the checkbox for auto mask. This is what removes the face mask box. The face tracker shows the D-Lib selected. It looks like none of the other options are selectable. This is what is used to get the face tracking. In DINet, it would be done manually with the open face application. If you scroll down, you will see the three new sliders that I added that allow you to fine tune control the bottom part of the chin during the alpha blending process. You might have to adjust this depending on your video to avoid any double chins. Here we can specify reference frames we want to use from our video. Make sure to check the activate custom reference frames if you want to use this, else it will randomly select 5 frames. Let's give it a try. I am going to test one of the videos that came with DINet examples that I used a while back when trying out DINet. And for the audio, I would like you to guess what audio I will be using. I have written down 5 frames that I liked and worked well for this video. These 5 frames show a good variance of the facial expressions. You might have better luck selecting the same frame for all 5 frames, or a variance. You will probably need to play around with this to see what works best for your video. Once you have selected 5 frames, you can click Visualize Reference Frames, and it will show you the frames you selected. I also used an open source application called DJV to see the frame number that corresponds to certain parts of the video to be able to find these frames a bit easier. For this video, these frames showed a good variance of mouth movements. There are a couple that are very similar, but oh well. Click Process Video when finished selecting options. It usually takes a while, so I will skip to when it is finished. It has finished, let's have a look. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school, on the other side of the ocean. And there we have it. Anyways, I just wanted to share this with you all, because I just found out about this lipstick application a couple days ago, and thought it was great. That is all for now. Enjoy.